What up? This is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Doctor Sleep. Hey, before you watch this review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you would like to help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramascreen. That's patreon.com slash ramascreen. Let's rock this. I mentioned to you before that I have never read a single Stephen King book, but I'm a big fan of many of the movie adaptations based on his work. The first time I watched Stanley Kubrick's 1980 classic The Shining was actually back in college, and although it did not really scare the shit out of me, Jack Nicholson's performance blew me away, understandably so. This sequel, Doctor Sleep, dials down the psychological terror and plays it more like a textbook good versus evil thriller, which I don't mind that at all. In fact, I find Doctor Sleep to be visually stunning, it's well directed, it's got plenty of nostalgia moments for the fans, and it's full of unexpected yet clever surprises. Written and directed by Mike Flanagan based on Stephen King's novel, Ewan McGregor plays the now grown-up Danny Torrance 40 years after the terrifying event at the Overlook Hotel. Over the years, Dan has fought to find some semblance of peace, which suddenly gets shattered when he encounters a teenager named Abra who has the same extraordinary gift as Danny known as The Shine. Abra sought Danny out for help against the sinister Rose the Hat and her followers, the True Knot, who feed off the Shine innocence in their quest for immortality. Dan is compelled to reawaken his own past and embrace his fears as he and Abra team up for this life-or-death battle against Rose. Whereas the first movie, The Shining, put more heavy emphasis on the terror and the chase as the insanely mad Jack Torrance with an axe roams about the hotel trying to murder his family. This movie, Dr. Sleep, in my opinion, takes the comic book route it's basically like superheroes versus supervillains. It's like Charles Xavier's gang versus Magneto's gang. So that is what the big epic conflict in this film comes down to. Hell, even Rebecca Ferguson's character at one point refuels her power in the similar fashion that Bane injects himself with Venom before he goes off to fight Batman. It's not really a criticism, honestly. It's just an observation. And you know what? I kind of understand why that is an effective way of going about this sequel. Because that is the kind of stuff that easily lands these days, or it's easily digestible. Again, not a criticism. I genuinely enjoy this film. Without spoiling too many details, there are several sequences in Doctor Sleep that, let's just say, will mess with your equilibrium. But they make for a trippy yet mesmerizing visual. Dr. Sleep goes above and beyond in terms of its imagery and spectacles that are just top notch. And the way the story incorporates the Overlook Hotel, it doesn't do it in a way that makes the hotel function as nothing more than a prop or a gimmick. And just like in the first movie where the camera sort of followed the swinging movement of Jack's axe, the cinematography in Dr. Sleep knows how to make the best use of every corner of every room and every blocking and positioning. So what you get are these iconic frames that are now burned into your memories. The music composed by the Newton brothers goes from haunting to suspenseful to the simple rhythm of a heartbeat that elevates the anticipation. As far as the performance goes, no offense to Ewan McGregor who does just fine here, but it's all about Rebecca Ferguson and that young talent Kylie Curran. Those two women are remarkable to watch. I can't take my eyes off of them. And I don't say this often, but kudos to the casting director for hiring people who bear strikingly eerie resemblance to the original actors who played Jack, Wendy, and Little Danny. That's another thing that I appreciate about this film in that Dr. Sleep does not dare to change too many things whenever it features elements from the original film, partly because they want to make it seem like the story picks up where it left off at the beginning. And I'm guessing the other reason is if they change too many things about the elements from the first film, 
they would get an earful from the fans. Okay, you know how Deadwood the movie earlier this summer gave the series its much needed proper ending? And El Camino Breaking Bad movie kind of wrapped it all up in a bow tie. Well, Dr. Sleep gives a solid conclusion to Danny Torrance's purpose and journey. I think fans of The Shining and fans of Stephen King would be very pleased by this film. They are in for a treat.